Okay, the resume that got a software engineer a $300,000 job at Google. I mean, I already see Microsoft, Amazon past experience. I think I should just stop the video there and just say, that's it. That's why he got the job. <laughs> now let's read more into it. Um, let's look at the introduction before we go back to the resume and just see if we can pinpoint exactly why he got this job. My name is Alex. I previously worked as an engineer at Amazon, Microsoft before. That's basically all three. That's the big three, all of it. Above is the resume I used to apply to Google and land an exciting $300,000 job offer. What's interesting is if I was Google, would I hire someone that worked at Amazon and Microsoft? Because that's basically telling me they've worked at two massive companies and they didn't stay. So they're less likely to stay here too. And they're probably going to leave and try to do something else after. I don't know. It's the resume I like to share working with candidates who are applying for software engineering roles. But before digging into resume strategies that worked for me, let's first talk about the elephants in the room. Dude, you worked at Amazon and Microsoft, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that is the big elephant in the room. Yes, I do have those experiences on my resume. But before Microsoft, I just had Amazon. Before Amazon, it was just an empty, empty resume with some side project. I mean, I'm not, this is controversial, but... I think Amazon is easier to get into than other companies. So I ran my own startup for eight years and I interviewed a lot of engineers. And I would say that Amazon engineers I interviewed usually performed the worst at, at my interview. So maybe that's maybe there's something wrong with my interview. Maybe I'm testing them in something that Amazon doesn't really care about. Maybe they're good at other things, but that's just from my experience. Don't hang me for it. Um, the experience, experiences help, but nobody starts off having experiences. For anyone starting off, the only way to stand out is having a clean cut resume. The next thing I'm going to say is though, experiences help, but also the school you went to. I know people care about that. I personally don't care about that, but I know people care. So let's just see if you went to like Stanford, Harvard or one of those ones. New York University. Okay, not bad. That makes whatever he's going to say f probably, um, yeah, have more weight. Um, you've you must have had referrals, internal connections, or cheated. I mean, I don't think anyone thinks you cheated. That's a bit crazy. It is true that referrals help when applying to a company, but when applying to a really large tech company, referrals are so often that they are treated exactly the same as a code application. Um, I, don't, I guess I, I, I interned at Google twice a long time ago. Not that long, okay, I'm not that old, but <laughs> um, a few years ago. And I didn't have a referral, but I remember talking to like my managers and other people that worked there and they were telling me it was very important so maybe now it's not but I would assume that it is though because if you think about it if you have someone really smart and they're telling you another of their friend is smart it would be crazy to basically just treat it as a normal code application so I don't know if that's true I would be shocked to know but if anyone knows that and that works at these companies comment comment I guess below and let, let us know if that's true if it's hard to believe, understand that around 40% of all jobs are found through referrals. That means 60% are found without one. Fair. But then that also means that referrals are actually pretty helpful. Code applications work is just about how to make them work. And when you code apply, all you get to code apply with is your resume. Okay. Nine ways to improve your resume. Before we read these nine ways to improve your resume, let's actually look at his resume and see what he did to see if we can pick anything up. So he worked at Amazon first. Well, actually, no, let's go to the start. He went to university, studied computer science. That's pretty cool. Courseworks, operating system, iOS programming, cybersecurity. I'm pretty sure anyone reading this just quickly skips over this, except they have a PhD or something. Honors Gates Millennium Scholar. I don't know what that means, but it has Bill Gates on it, so it's probably really important. Um, okay, next projects. I think this is really important. When I was hiring people, um, the number one thing I cared about was their project because at the end of the day, I needed them to come into my company and just start writing code and start getting things done as quickly as possible. And the only way I, they could prove to me that they could do that was by just having loads of projects. So I think this is really cool. Let's see. NinjaPrep.io, platform to offer coding problem practices with built-in code editor and written video solutions in React. This is really good. And the fact he built this means that he probably knows a lot about those coding problems that he's doing in there. Utilize that, reverse proxy, um, developed. Why does he need a proxy though? Mm, okay. Developed using styled components for 95% styling. Implemented Docker. I mean, this is really good. This on its own is already good enough to just say, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. Let's see if it still exists. Ninjaprep.io. 
No, except I spelled it wrong. Ninja prep dot io. I think it's done. Okay. Next, heat map. Visualize Google takeout location data of location history using Google Maps API. Included local file system. Yeah, this is a whatever um, project, I guess. You could probably write a single prompt on Claude that would get you this built in a single thing like very, very quickly. So I don't know about this one, but maybe he built this very early on. Scheduler. Simulated round robin. Utilized priority queue. Again, this looks like college courseworks as opposed to actually huge side projects. But I'll say this Ninja Prep on its own, like I said earlier, is pretty good. It's clear that this person knows what they're talking about. And then bang, they land a job at Microsoft. How long did they last there? 2020. Oh, sorry, they landed a job at Amazon. They lasted there more than a year. That's not bad. Developed Amazon checkout and payment services to handle traffic of 10 million daily global transactions. That's really good. Um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Integrated iframes for credit cards and bank accounts to secure 80% of all consumer traffic and prevent. It's so cool because these actually sound like huge projects, especially the 10 million. That's a good number. 80% of all consumer traffic. It sounds like they actually worked on important projects rather than just working on things that are getting thrown away or not being used by anyone led your transaction implementation for javascript front-end framework to showcase consumer transaction and reduce call center costs by 25 million i mean this guy what's his name alexander he's a smart guy 25 million if he saved amazon 25 million then why won't you hire him and pay him 300 thousand? do the maths <laughs> Recovered Saudi Arabia checkout failure impacting 4,000 customers due to incorrect get form redirection. And it only happened in Saudi Arabia. They have like specific forms for each country. Weird. But again, I really like this because he's basically specified very clearly 10 million, 80%, $25 million saved, um, fixed a bug that um, affected 4,000 people. That's really good. I mean, I can see how this person would then instantly get a job at Microsoft. Let's see what they did there. Developed permission management on dashboard report. Oh my God, this suddenly just seems so boring. What the flip? <laughs> That's probably why he didn't last long at Microsoft. He was doing things for 10 million daily global transactions and saving $25 million. And he got to Microsoft and he developed permission management on dashboards and reports for all users on power or whatever the hell that is. Integrated easy sharing to share reports on Microsoft Teams to increase consumer product usage by 15%. That's cool. Implemented report data snapshots to share report views with other users to address number one requested. <laughs> you know what it is? I'm reading this and I'm thinking, I don't want to work at Microsoft if I ever need to get a full-time job. This sounds pretty boring to me, I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I can see how with an application like this and assuming he's probably really good at leak code because he built something that actually helps people with coding problems this can get your job at google and let's see what he summarizes are the nine ways to improve your resume don't repeat yourself talk about people my google always reminded me that offered me a role because of my experience working with product managers mention your experience working with cross-functional teammates i think he did that i don't i didn't really see that but okay talk about impact he did this really well i would say this should be number one if anything um yeah this is this is huge and i think he did a great job at that please format it if the resume is painful to look at whoever looks at it will just move on to the next one i agree i think that was really good formatting because yeah i mean i didn't have any troubles reading it experience is greater than, than completion it's 100 percent okay to put unfinished projects i mean that's a bit dodgy does that mean is that why the whatever the ninja prep the io is not out because you didn't actually finish working on it leading the project halfway still counts as leading the project okay use recognizable words it is really unethical to put software engineer instead of software development engineer for my amazon experience the job are exactly the same don't complicate things using I think they're different though, because remember how I mentioned earlier that I interviewed a lot of Amazon engineers and they were okay. A lot of them had this software development engineer and I was like, hmm, whatever that is probably isn't that hard to get. So I think, hmm, not putting it in there is a bit question. Speak engineering, give the impression that you're a software engineer by including more engineering vocabulary, talk about unit tests. I love how the first thing you talk about being an engineer is unit tests. What a sad life we have. <laughs> Deployment version control, Jira tickets. Jira tickets. Speak like a software engineer, I guess. 
latency, database, API calls, distributed systems. Yeah, I mean, keep it simple. KISS. A resume is meant to be read quickly. We did read that very quickly. Um, important experience is greater than every experience. Everyone has a ton of things that they could write on their resume. That's true. I had a job at Hollister when I was young, and um, I think it would be very stupid to put that on my resume because it has nothing to do with software engineering. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good. I can see why he got that job. 